number 16 will rise to the top of City Field and will never be worn by a Met again as Doc Gooden's number is retired. And that leads us to Diamond Notes, brought to you by London Jewelers. And it also leads us to talk to our friend, who I know watches the show, and now he's a guest. And that is Dwight Gooden. Doc, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. Congratulations. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I am a fan of the show, and I always watch you guys' show. And first of all, before we get started... I have to say thank you to you guys because you guys have been campaigning for me for a couple of years now, and I think you guys played a big part. I just want to say thank you. Um, I remember being on here last year before they announced they were going to retire my jersey. We had the same conversation about it, and I was saying that I didn't deserve a life sentence, and you guys were on my side, mm -hmm. and I was come too. So I thank you guys. If I ever run for city council, wow. I want you guys on the team. <laughs> That's so nice of you, yeah. Doc. Thank you, man. All right, so are you nervous? I mean, you've pitched in World Series. You've thrown no hitters. Are you nervous for Sunday? I, um, I wouldn't say nervous. I'm excited because my kids, my grandkids get to take part in this. Obviously, I want my parents to be there, but they can't be there. Um, but it's an opportunity for my grandkids, especially, who didn't get to see me play or know what I did for a living. They get to not really see me play, but experience what it was like um, to hear the cheers. To be on the same, well, not the same field I played on, but in the same atmosphere, I get a taste of what it was like when I played when I was going through my prime. So I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to all the fans there that filming me from day one, just to kind of thank them. I always wanted this opportunity to go back and see the fans since 1984. I mean, 1994, when the Mets only cut ties. Now I get the opportunity to go back to the fans and let them know how much I appreciated them through all my ups and downs. And the reason it was so easy to go to bat for you, Doc, and I, I grew up a Met fan, and I lived through 84, so my fondest, fondest memories are sitting with my dad watching you striking 14 giants out. like, And you still resonate so many years later, and you really saw through the documentary. You saw it through all of the, the history of looking back at 86. Did you, even though you didn't feel the love from the Mets, did you still feel the love from the Met fan? 100%. The fans were great. And even with the Mets, when they want to cut ties, I get it. I understand the business part of it. But for me, I was more so upset and hurt because of what I did, the, the things that I caused to myself. And I wanted to make it right with the fans. But you're right, through the documentary and all that, and the fans, so many times where they could have turned their bike on me, but they didn't. They always stuck by me. And especially, you know, I had my sons off the field and to see them support me. And that's what it's all about because you're still dealing with a, with a life here. And um, now I get the opportunity to thank them and share this moment with my family and my friends and all the fans that have been with me since day one. Is it special? Is it even more special, Doc, that later on in the season, and people, it, it's you can't say Doc without Daryl. And you can't say Daryl without Doc that, that Daryl, uh, who's mending now from from heart surgery, do, is it is it mean more because he's getting his number retired too? It does. I'm just as happy for him as much as I am, well, just about as much as I am for myself. Um, because we've both been through basically the same thing. We had almost that he was a hitter of the pitch, almost similar careers, similar off the field struggles, and now both of us got our life together. And um, it's, a, it's a celebration for both of us, and I think it's great that we're doing it on separate days. So I'm happy that it's the same year. You know, you just, so I think he deserves it just as much as I do. You know, Doug, you just mentioned the things that you went through and taking accountability to, from the decisions that you made. So when you look back at your Met time, do you look back fondly at what you accomplished, or is there a part of you that looks back and says that there could have been more? You know what? Um, I think now I don't say it could have been more anymore. Besides, besides as a team, as a team, I think we left a championship on the table in 88. Not taking anything away from the Dodgers or the year that Hershey has had, but for the, my individual career, um, now that I'm getting my number retired, I'm, I'm happy with everything. I have closure now with my career. I don't think I left anything on the table. I just had throws and people talk about what could have been, what might have been if I didn't have those throws. But my thing is, when I made it to the big leagues, when I made the roster in 84, my only goal I had was stand healthy and play a long time. But during my 16 years career, I was able to win you know, three road series. I won just about every award a pitch can win. And now I'm being honored with one of the highest honors you can get from the team. So I have nothing to be ashamed of and look back on and say what could have been. Uh, even though sometimes, like, when the uh, Hall of Fame thing comes around, you know, you think about that a little bit. I'll be lying to say I, I don't think about it. But at the same time, I don't beat myself up about it anymore. And I'm very happy and 
um, satisfied with the way my career turned out. I, I know, Doc, that you've gotten a lot of love from both fan bases in this town, both you and Daryl, and that's very special. But I know that Mets fans sort of uh, certainly want to claim you, but you get the World Series with the Yankees. <laughs> does does this moment sort of in some way solidify you truly when it's all said and done as a Met, in spite of the fact that the championships came with the Yankees? Well, I got one with the Mets, too. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, of course. <laughs> but the, the last two you know, came think, with, came with the Yankees. Uh, that's true. You know, I'm I'm very happy. I'm I'm definitely a Met at heart. I've always been a Met at heart. But I'm very appreciative of what the Yankees done for me and what Mr. Steinbrenner did for me and my family. I remember the times he spent with my dad before he passed away at the hospital. Those things go unnoticed. And still today, I still go to Yankee Stadium. I feel very proud to say I got to experience the time that I did at the old Yankee Stadium where all the great players played and all the history was made. And there's great fans in the Bronx as well. And I appreciate those fans as well for always being loyal to me and supportive of me as well. So. I'm just happy for the opportunity. I got to play for both teams and win a World Series for both teams. But when it's all said and done, I'll always be a man. Well, you know, Doc, you know, you know that uh, I'm I'm a person who worries a lot. I, I get nervous. So if I ever was having, if somebody said, "Okay, Michael, you're having a day in July," I would not leave my house until July. I wouldn't want to get run over by a car. <laughs> Have you been very careful so that you know that on Sunday you're there at City Field and that nothing's going to happen? That you're not getting run over by a car. I don't I don't know. But you know what, Michael, to be honest with you, um, I've had breakfast with the devil before. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been there. I know what pain looks like. I know what pain feels like. If I got through those days, I'm not afraid of the days ahead of me. As long as I take care of myself and put myself in a good position and do the things I'm supposed to do, I'll be fine. I'm not afraid of living my life anymore the right way. I'm in a good place now. I have good health. I have a good relationship with my kids and my grandkids. And I look forward to Sunday. Um, I'm obviously careful with things, but I have to be careful with everything now every day because of, I'm not getting any younger. And because of, you know, when you have an addiction problem, even if you're not active in it, it can creep up on you at any time to trigger you. So I got to be aware of it through good times and bad times. So I got to say even kill either way. But um, I've been enjoying the ride. The momentum is built up to Sunday. Um, tonight I'm having dinner with some of my family, some friends. Some of the 86 guys going to be there. Um, at the Empire Steakhouse in the city, and tomorrow we're having a dinner with my family. Be up tomorrow, so it's just I'm just enjoying the ride, man. And now that I'm not playing anymore, like when, and what I mean by this, what I'm getting ready to say is, when you're winning awards, winning World Series, you enjoy it, but you can't really soak it all in because it's next to the next thing. Mm. Next, gotta get ready for spring training. Now with this coming up, I can enjoy it just as much as my kids, my family, my friends. Let it all soak in, and even after Sunday, I can continue to enjoy this and enjoy the things that I've been able to do, and just be happy with myself right. for things and where I'm going. Yeah, you know, Doc, 86 gets brought up all the time, but just take us back to 85, 24 and 4, 1.53 earn run average, 16 complete games, 268 strikeouts. What was it like to just be that dominant? What did it feel like to be that good for that year? Oh man, it was amazing. you know, it was unbelievable. The thing is, I didn't realize that year was that special probably until after maybe the first ten starts. Then you start realizing that the crowd's bigger, there's more media attention, you can see the tailgates in the parking lot, the the, the hitters are more locked in, everybody's locked in. It became more of a not just a start, but like you say, a lot of people say it's an event or what have you, but and having Gary Carter as my catcher, he brought the best of me. Gary wanted the 10 strikeouts. He wanted to set out. He wanted to complete game. And he wouldn't set up for less. Cause I remember some games, if I was up to nothing, Gary wanted me to pitch like it was one nothing. He still wanted me to dominate. And I accepted the challenge. I know the fans wanted that. Because every time I got two strikes on a batter, they were standing up clapping, wanting to see that. And I accepted the challenge. No, no disrespect to the, the other hitters or other teams. But once we scored a couple of runs early, I wanted to be out on the mound every chance I got because it, it became bigger than just a game. And I enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I probably should have because when you're going through it, you have expectations for yourself as well. And, you know, you got to get ready for the next start and the next start and keep working. But now, this kind of reminds me of what 85 was like with the momentum building up to Sunday. Just maybe not as like the mount, but just like last night, I was at the event and the crowd, where the crowd was, a lot of Mets fans, and the momentum of everybody. Everybody's happy. You see all the signs, all the logos. Um, doing a lot of you know, a lot of good press coverage, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of '85. But I'm able I'm able to enjoy it more now than I did 
say when I was going through the, the, the season in 85. We're talking with our good friend Dwight Gooden here on the Michael K. Show. He gets his number retired at City Field. On on Sunday, now you threw so hard, and and obviously the the curveball was like nothing that anybody's ever seen. And what we see now in baseball, Doc, is that so many pitchers are getting hurt, and you ended up hurting your arm as you went along as well. Is the body built to throw that hard that often, Doc? Uh, that's a great question. I think just my opinion now, like when I got hurt, you know, I think the wear and tear kind of caught with me because I threw a lot in high school as well. I just got to the point where I hit a wall. If I had to do it over, I'll do it the same way. I think now what we're seeing is more concerned with velocity, more concerned with spin rate. But I don't think they teach the mechanics as much as they did when I was coming up and doing my time in the 80s. And I think that's a problem. Even with the pitchers, they're doing like the half windup now. I don't think they're getting the full um, momentum as they possibly can. How do they wind up and using their legs more? I think now it's just more throwing as opposed to pitching. And it's nothing against the pitchers. I think it's just the way the systems are now and the way the game's taught. I don't know what the analytics or the te- technology has a lot to do with it. But the game's changed so much where, say, like a Greg Maddox or a Tom Glavin, they probably wouldn't even be looked at today because they didn't throw in the upper 90s. Um, it's all about velocity and center right now. And I think guys are more concerned with that than working mechanics. And working on developing, you know, different pitches, different arm angles is not important. And I think that's why we're seeing more injuries now. But, again, that's just my opinion. Who do you like watching pitch now? Uh, the guy that I like probably the most watch is, is on the shelf now. Uh, Gary Cole is obviously my guy now. That DeGrom is out of New York. I still love DeGrom, but DeGrom's a close second now. DeGrom was my guy, but he's out of New York now, so I got to say the New York guys. So I'll say Gary Cole. Hope he gets healthy soon, and um, I can't wait to watch him throw. Now, the, you, you bring up DeGrom, and is, this was a guy that knew, hey, I wasn't going to be going much past the sixth inning, so I'm just going to lay it all out of the line. If, if, if Doc Gooden had that philosophy, hey, I, I don't have to go deep in the games. I can just go five, six innings. How, how would that look? How dominant do you, much more dominant do you think you'd be in the first five innings if you knew you didn't have to pitch beyond five or six? Oh, oh it's, a, it's a totally different game, totally different build up. You set up definitely the way it goes. And I blame the system. I don't really blame the pitchers for that. Um, I hope they get back to the old school ways where guys go deeper in games and they get rid of the 100 pitch um, thing and pacing lineup only you know, twice around. Um, I think it'll work to the pitcher's advantage now, especially with mechanics. Um, a different game, totally different game now. And I like the way it was when I played, to be honest with you, where you go deep in games. But if I had to do that now, I think it would be to my advantage, obviously. Obviously, it would definitely save my arm. And I'll tell you who would have been a real effective pitching today, not that it wasn't effective when I pitched, it would be Sid Fernandez. Look at Sid Fernandez's stats, which I don't know off the top of my head. But Sid was a great 5 6 inning pitcher. But when you try to extend him to the 7th, 8th inning, you know, it would be made by a walk, a blue single, then a home run, something crazy would happen after that. But if he only had to go 5 6 inning, I think Sid would probably win 20 games every year. All right, here's the big question, Doc. Do you have your speech written, and do you think you're going to cry? Wow. <laughs> you, man, you're preparing these questions. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to cry. I'm just going to let the emotions go where they go. I've thought about writing a speech, but I said, you know what? I'm just going to go from the heart. Um, I've thought about what I'm going to say, obviously, the people I want to thank and show my appreciation. But I'm just going to go from my heart, whether it's a three-minute or whether it's a ten-minute. I don't know. But my emotions, it's really hard to say um, because I feel off the crowd a lot of times. It's almost going to be like pitching again and going out there and having my grandkids see me for the first time on the field in the atmosphere. I would say probably, but I'm not sure. If I do, it is what it is. Absolutely. Let it flow. Don't hold it back if that's what you're feeling. Now, the more the more you cry, the more they're going to love yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, they love you anyway. <laughs> How is your relationship with, with, with Steve Cohen and, and Mrs. Cohen? Oh, it's awesome. Um, I love those guys, and I can't thank them enough for awarding uh, me with the highest honor that you could possibly get. Um, they've been great with me. I think they've been great with the fans, great with the alumni, bringing us back. You know, they brought the old time of team back. And every time I've talked to Alex or Steve when I'm at the ballpark around, they've been nothing but first-class people. And um, I'm just happy to be a part of it and see that the team's now headed in the right, place, headed in the right direction. I think they have some good baseball people behind them. But I love these guys. I love what they're doing. I think now things are really starting to get turned around the right way for these guys. And I'm wishing, wishing nothing but the best for both of them. So I'm very, very thankful for what they're doing for me. I'll is tell there, you, uh, go ahead, Don, I'm sorry. Is there one game, one moment that stands out among all the others as your time with the Mets? Wow. If I had to pick one game, wow, there's so many good ones. I, I, can I take two? Sure. 
Okay, the, the first one would be in '84 when I broke, when I, from a personal standpoint, when I broke Herb Scores record. I struck out Marvell Wynn to break the record, strikeout record. Because you only get to be a rookie once, and to break that record and the, making the team as non roster player. From an individual standpoint, I love that one. That sticks out more. From a team standpoint, that I was involved with, I would say when we clinched against the Chicago Cubs at home and having the fans run on the field. I mean, it was fun and scary at the same time. I would say those two are my most memorable mem- memories besides winning the World Series with the Mets. Doc, I tell you what, I- I've known you forever. And, I mean, I'm so thrilled because you sound so happy and you sound so into it. And I can't, I can't tell you enough how much all three of us are so happy for you for what's going to happen on Sunday. We wanted to come on and talk with you a little and just wish you sending you good vibes for Sunday. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys and I mean that from my heart. Thank you guys so much when you guys had me on and we talked about returning the number because I do think that played a part. So I really thank you guys and always thank you for having me on and look forward to talking to you guys again soon. And let the tears flow, Doc. Let them flow. If you feel like crying, cry. (laughs) <laughs> yes, let's see what happens. I'm not going to hold back. If they come, they come. There you go. There you go. It. Soak it in, Doc. Enjoy it, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, my friend. All right. I appreciate you guys. You got Thank it. You. Those are Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers. Visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the Americana Mall and the Mall at Short Hills. I, I, I didn't just say that with him. I got to tell you, uh, Don and Peter. He, he had such clarity. You know, the, the, Doc's been, as he said, he's had breakfast with the devil. He's been battling demons for a long time. He sounds so clear and happy, and that makes me happy as well. And, and then one of the reasons that we were advocates for him, not just because, Michael, we're fans of him as the person, or me as a fan of the Mets, is that don't, don't you look at his problems differently now than you did back in the 80s? Like back in the 80s, you were a bad guy. You did drugs. What's the matter with you? You're a bad guy. You deserve what you get. And then you hear these stories, what Doc and Darrell went through, or anybody that went through addiction. Steve Howe with the Yankees. And then you realize that it's it's a disease. It was something he struggled with. And, and so you look at it differently than you do now. And, I, and, I, and the fact that he was so disconnected with the Mets because I think he was just labeled as a bad guy that threw his career away. And I, I guess at the bottom line is he did. But how much of that is he responsible for? Some, clearly, and he's taken that responsibility. But I think we have better clarity now than we did 30, 40 years ago on exactly what he was going through and what addicts are going through, that they're not all bad guys. Not all the choices were the wrong choices. Um, it just, there, there were things that happened, and for him to put in the words that he did, you know, breakfast of the devil, that's what, that's what some of these people were going through. And yes, there are bad guys, right, Peter? But then there are people that are good people that unfortunately made some bad choices early on, and their life went in a direction they just didn't want it to go into. And now we, we look at those people a little bit differently than I think we did 30, 40 years ago. I'm just glad that he seems like he's got it together and let him enjoy himself hey, on Sunday. Really you know, cool. There were times, Michael, when we spoke to him. Remember, remember the the, the, the issues, and we talked about about him a couple of times that we had him on, where like Strawberry reached out. There were times we spoke to him where he didn't seem like he was in a good place. No, not at all. And there's you times know, I saw him that he didn't look healthy, and I, no. I worried about him. But he sounds terrific today. So yeah, and it's and it's and it's a constant. It's a daily battle. And maybe when it's all said and done, those will be the battles that he'll be best remembered for, um, as opposed to the ones on the baseball field.